Welcome back to the channel, custom car fans. This is gonna be a good one today. Today we're gonna to be getting this Ford Thunderbird Super Coupe ready for the drift track. So I got this car a little while back. You may have seen in a previous video. Won't bore you with those same details. Head back and check that out for more info. But basically this is as I got it with a few repairs to keep it going. Had a bit of fun, but the suspension is terrible. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do for this first trip out on the track is fit a set of cheapo eBay max peeding rod coilovers off a 350Z. Why a 350Z are here you say? Well because you can't get a coilover set for the Super Coupe. So a little bit of internet trawling and I found a bit of information that the 350Z stuff should fit. Hopefully. So let's get into it and see how bad it's going to be. Oh, nice. I forgot about that. Oh, we've hardly even started and we've got some entertaining issues. So, oh, well, it's falling off already. Ooh, inwards, inwards, inwards. There we go. Just like that. I'm not sure what they were thinking with this automatic ride control, because to be honest, it was soft as a marshmallow, even on the firm setting. So that can go in the bin. Oh yeah. So before stripping this car down completely, I should probably check if the 350Z stuff is anywhere close to fitting on a Ford Thunderbird. Because as we all know, reading something on the internet and it actually being true are two very different things. I mean, how on earth they can build these for the money? I think these ended up costing me 205 pounds delivered. 205 quid delivered. Now granted, they're probably shit, but 205 quid delivered. Here is the very basic initial will it fit test. Well, I mean, it's a damper with a spring around it. I think really, that's as good as I can hope for at this stage. I mean, like I say, I did read up a fair bit about it and that looks like it might go. The main thing is gonna be if the top mount from the Thunderbird fits the, uh, the damper and the spring on the top of this strut. But like I say, until I get it all out, I won't know. I've gone for the easiest thing that I could get a buzz gun on, which was this top arm pinch bolt in the strut here, in the, the hub rather. And I'm hoping the amount of flex I've got now on this bottom arm, I'm hoping I should be able to sneak that out, he says. He says, come on, come on, it's so close, it's so close. Okay. So we've got the strut out and this is the first opportunity we've got to compare them properly. I mean, they don't look too far out, do they? Even the length, look at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much chance I'm gonna be able to use that pillow ball assembly. But if I can get this off and hope that the spring diameter seats into something nicely in the original top mount, then we should be pretty golden by the look of it. that off easily I think that'd be good Pop that on there so that's the arrangement I'm going to run with for the top get rid of all these spaces because obviously that's a very small That is the top end of the coilover assembled. The Thunderbird top mount, and then the rest of it is all the Max Peden Rods eBay specials. So all I'm gonna do now is take a bit of a reference measurement, and I am at 190 from this bottom, just so I've got a record of 
where I am with that. And then I'm going to spin on the bottom and likewise, I'm going to just set that at a nominal spot. What we've then always got, you see, is we've got, we know that 190 is down here. So I'll probably just leave that about there at the minute and see where that gets us. So that wasn't a bad guess, really. They've come up a little bit shorter, the uh, new assembly, I think, ever so slightly. Oh, I don't know. They're pretty similar, actually. But I might set it a little bit shorter because my gut feeling is that these are going to be pretty firm and these old school style larger coils are going to compress more before they hit their ride height. So I'm just going to spin a little bit more up here. The one thing that just occurred to me was I hadn't checked the fixing hole at the bottom for the bolt that goes through the lower arm and it is bigger on the Thunderbird than in the coilovers on from the 350. So I just need to drill that out. Looks like a 14-ish, something like that. Hey, how about that? 14. Not bad guess. So there we go, folks. Two coilovers modified and ready to rock. So let's get these on the Chunder Turd and see what sort of height this gives us where I've set these up at their sort of nominal base height. We have obviously still got adjustment up here, although we have bottomed out here, and I don't think we're gonna want them any longer. But who knows? Let's get them on and find out. That's the strut in the arch. I can push it up into position, but obviously I need to grind a little bit off here because it's too wide. So let's take a little bit off each side and then we can get that in. A little bit disappointingly, the rear shocks from the 350Z don't fit in any way, shape or form. The springs might fit. And then I had a thought, and where have I put them? I've lost them already. Here we go, here we go. I've got these KYB gas adjust left over from a job, and they're really, really firm trying to find parts to get these shocks on and any good self-respecting garage will have one of these. A bucket of doom. I have been panning for gold in here, but unfortunately I think this river has been panned one too many times and there's not much gold left in there. Basically, I need an M10 metric fine. The KYBs are in. That was actually pretty straightforward. I've got to put the wheel on check that they don't bottom out and see how stiff they are but they're at least fitted result that is it for today i have got the 350z front struts modified and in using the ford thunderbird top mounts and i've put some kyb shocks on the rear haven't put the springs from the 350z kit in there because I don't really know if it's going to improve it that much and it looked to be quite a lot of work i'm going to have to cut off the perches maybe machine up some additional perches to fit the different size spring so i've left that well alone for the minute but a bit of a bonus that i was able to find those shocks in the cupboard and upgrade those i've got some nuts this morning they are both bolted up in here so it's time for a road test Picked up this uh, little cheeky four-wheel tracking alignment, needed a bit of a fix, couple of electrical issues, and I've just run the Thunderbird quickly on that and tracked it up something like. So, talk the wheels, road test. One advantage of keeping all the duff tires in the hedge is you get some sacrificial skidders. Good morning, and it is a beautiful morning here in Cornwall. A perfect morning for some motorsport. Kevin and I are off to Perrinporf to try and avoid crashing this into the tire wall. I say try and avoid. It'd be entertaining if we actually get it to slide, really. Done a little bit of work on it to get it ready. Max Peden rod coilovers, the grassroots drift speciality, uh, some new shocks on the rear, and a whole host of tyres. So hopefully we're going to be slaying them, maybe. Check him out, 
skin. We've arrived at Perenporf. We have signed in, signed our life away, and we have gone through scrutineering, and amazingly, the car passed. I don't think the checks are that stringent, really. BMW, 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 BMW. Oh no! Mate, it's, I'm so close to being able to unlock it. Who'd uh, have thought the jack handle would come in use for this? Come on. Hey! We're in! We're in the car! Thanks. Thank God. It's getting a little bit warm, but it's coping. It's great fun. Oh no! Oh no! What have you done? What have you done? And oh well. I guess we won't be driving it home. <laughs> Good job, we've got a truck. Right, beat that out. Look, oh, look, there's some of the headlights still. Can we have it back then? <laughs> Can we have it then? Yeah, I'm in. Oh, look, I couldn't decide when we stopped. Thanks, mate. Thank that's you. Right. Oh, it's better, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. I fucking picked up. Overnight parts delivery from America, look. I'm not going to lie, it was burnt in half, but I popped it out. It was as fast as a walk of shame. Yep. I think a badge of honour. <laughs> first drift day, first damage. Bye, my friend. <laughs> so that was an epic day. Really, really fun. I'd recommend that to anybody. You can go out and buy an E36, a compact, whatever it is, and for very little money, have a whole load of fun. As you can see, the fun got a little out of hand and I crashed into the wall. But I don't really care, because I'm sure it will happen multiple times, and we're definitely going back to Perrin next year to race some more. Race, drift, whatever you want to call it, just have a load of fun. And then hopefully go a bit further afield to some other circuits as well, because that was a top day. A uh, few things probably got to do. Weld the diff, because a limited slip diff sucks. It was just trying to grip all the time. Uh, get a bit more lock on the front end. We definitely need to do that and try and keep on top of the heat a little bit. So probably wire in some fans permanently or on a switch for the engine, because it did start running a little bit rough towards the end of the day when the heat got all soaked into everything. But um, all in all, what, what a top day, fantastic fun.